The cliched dialogue we hear when trying something different or difficult is, it is not a rocket science. Indeed, we are going to discuss rocket science in this video. Rockets, helps us to put our payload of satellites into the required orbit. They work, based on the principle of Newton's third law, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. To make it simple, when the pressurized air from a stretched balloon is pushed out, the balloon will start moving forward. Here the expelled air is the action, and the balloon moving forward is the reaction. Likewise in rockets, when hot gases are expelled out with high velocity, an equal and opposite force called thrust, moves the rocket towards the sky. So, what makes the difference between the balloon and the rocket is the amount of power. Normally, rockets will be about 100 meters in height, and millions of pounds in weight. To lift such a massive giant, million pounds of the thrust are mandatory. To achieve such a thrust level, high mass flow rate of propellant is essential. To make a fire, we need fuel, oxygen, and a heat source. Here, fuel and oxidizers are denoted as the propellant. If these propellants are used in gaseous mode, their tank size and mass will condense the rocket efficiency. Hence these propellants are liquefied. For liquefying the propellants, a cryogenic temperature, which is below minus 100 degrees Celsius is required. Let's say, the fuel which is hydrogen, liquefies at minus 253 degrees Celsius, and the oxidizer which is oxygen, liquefies at minus 183 degrees Celsius. Refer to our video in the above link to know more about how oxygen is liquefied using cryogenic technology. Compared to solid propellants, cryogenic propellants deliver more thrust for every kilogram of propellant consumed. This means they have a high specific impulse. Specific impulse is the ratio of thrust and mass flow rate. It is analogous to our vehicle mileage. Nevertheless, the low density of cryogenic propellants requires a big size fuel tank and the insulation requirement of cryogenic propellants makes the system more complex and costlier. So, depending on the mission objectives and budget, cryogenic engines are constrained to the upper stages. You might be wondered why rockets are launched in multi-stages. During takeoff, the rocket lifts not only the payloads, but also the rocket structures and fuel tanks. Payloads are only a small proportion of the total mass. So, if multi-stages are used, that particular stage structure can get rid of the total mass once the fuel of that stage is finished. This will condense the load to further stage engines. Now, we will look into the interesting part of our video. A typical cryogenic rocket engine will be looking like this. First, we will understand the major parts of a cryogenic engine. These two parts on either side of the engine are turbo pumps. The left side turbo pump is responsible for pumping fuel, that is, liquid hydrogen into the engine, from the fuel storage tank. The other pump on the right side, is responsible for pumping oxidizer, that is, liquid oxygen into the engine. This is a heat exchanger, responsible for heating the helium gas. This part is the main injector, responsible for, uniformly injecting the propellants into the engine. This is the main combustion chamber, where the combustion of propellants takes place. This part is nozzle, and this is nozzle extension, where our burnt propellants are expelled out at supersonic velocity. So, broadly we can say that, this portion is power pack for pumping the propellants into the engine, and this portion is for burning the propellants. Now, we will understand how the engine is operating. As we discussed earlier, to obtain high thrust, we need more mass flow rate of propellants. This can be achieved with the help of high power pumps. For driving this pump, we need a high power drive, which can be an electric motor. But for powering motor, we need a huge set of batteries, which will make our engine more complex. So, brilliant idea here is to use a turbo pump. Turbo pump will be having a turbine at one end, and an impeller for pumping action is coupled at the other end. When hot gases at high pressure are expanded in this turbine, it will capture energy from the hot gas and convert it into mechanical energy. This mechanical energy will be transferred to the pump end through the shaft and converted to 
pressure energy, where fuel and oxidizer are pumped. The pressure of the propellants decides the pressure in the combustion chamber, which in turn decides the thrust developed by the cryogenic engine. Otherwise, we can say that, by controlling power to the turbine, we can control the thrust developed by the cryogenic engine. In other words, this turbo pump will serve both the functions of brake and accelerator to the cryogenic engine. So, this turbo pump is the most critical thing in the cryogenic engine design. In the next part, we will discuss about various cycles used in cryogenic engines and their comparison. Also, we will discuss the various fuels used in cryogenic engines and their comparison. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching our video. Subscribe to our channel if you like to access more such educational animated videos. Thank you.